class. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves cakes, so today we're gonna learn about what we put in them and why we need them there. We have all our ingredients ready. I have some butter. Butter! I'm gonna cut it into cubes. I'm gonna do this on a plate instead of just in my hands. I don't have I don't have a, like a surface to. So I'm gonna cut it into cubes to make it easier for the creaming stage that definitely has like a horn that's I'm going to add an equal amount of sugar. So we're creaming the sugar and the butter to coat the sugar crystals with air bubbles. And that's what's to make our cake nice and fluffy. Cream it. Cream yeah. it, baby. The smaller the crystals of the sugar, the more surface area you have for air pockets, which means you have uh, fluffier cakes, which is why we use caster sugar instead of granulated sugar. What, what do we add next? Eggs! Eggs! I don't know why I'm whispering! It's like, here's a secret between you and me. I'm gonna put eggs in. It's my secret <laughs> ingredient. No one knows you put eggs in. Now they all know! But I'm always really bad at cracking them in. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. One. <laughs> Two. Look at that, a no shell. But you know, the shell is just a crunchy, interesting aspect of cake. It just adds texture. Eggs have a threefold purpose. Uh, firstly, they add a lot of the moisture for the cake. Secondly, you remember those air bubbles that we made? The egg coats the air bubbles with protein so they don't burst while cooking. Thirdly, it acts as an emulsifier to help the butter, the fatty bit, to uh, mix with the watery part of the egg. Get together with that butter. Oh yeah. Should have like elevator music over it? <laughs> That's what I always just imagine lift music to be. We don't really have lift music in this country. Old jazz music. No, we don't. It's just the sound of people's disappointment. Uh, what do we have next? Flour. 100 grams of flour. Flour contains gluten, which is a protein that gives the cake structure. The beaten part is to make all the gluten molecules face the same direction. So when you bite into it, the cake will spring back and when you have a gluten-free cake it'll kind of just go squish. Also it's really important not to be too hard because uh, otherwise you're going to break all those air bubbles. I'm such a cereal murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I use vanilla extract to drown my victims. <laughs> just put half a teaspoon in. Vanilla extract is just a flavour enhancer. You can make a cake without vanilla extract, it'll just taste a bit more bland. Fun fact! Uh, the reason old books smell so good is because when they break down, they break into a molecule called vanillin, which is a very similar molecule to vanilla. Finding myself with a cake tin. I'm using this sort of clippy cake tin because it means that when it comes out the oven, I can just see it clipped and then I unclip it. It becomes a little bigger and it's easier to take the cake out. The reason I have the cake tin in two parts as well is because it's easier to grease um, and get it into the little corners. Sunflower oil. I'm using oil to grease the tins. The oil creates a fatty barrier between the cake tin and the cake, so they don't stick together. Look at the magic of how they stick together. There's a crease that you put it into. <laughs> put it down, and you clip it, and there's a cake tin. This is gonna be a really thin cake. It means that thin cake, you are what you eat, I'll be thin. <laughs> Setting the oven to 180 degrees. I'm putting this in the oven along with the jacket potatoes that my housemate is having for lunch. I'm ready for my close up, darling. The first stage is expansion when CO2. We didn't add baking powder. <laughs> baking powder! I am adding one teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, what baking powder is, is it's a combination of acid and alkali. So when they react in the oven, they produce carbon dioxide to help the cake expand. If we didn't have baking powder, you would have to mix the cake for maybe up to an hour, two hours. The first stage of cooking is the expansion phase. The baking powder that we put in will produce carbon dioxide and that will expand into the air bubbles. The water will vaporize and also the actual air will thermally expand. The second phase is setting. The gluten becomes less elastic, the starch absorbs water, and the albumin coagulates. So all these proteins get set into their structure. The third stage is browning, which is just the... What, browning? How do you explain browning? Uh, we're going to see if it's ready. <laughs> oh, that was good. 
That's how you know I have a small kitchen when everything is in arm's reach. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful cake. Okay. Ah, came out clean. Even though it's done. Gonna let the cake cool now. Magic. You can't ice it while it's still hot because the icing will just melt and go everywhere. We're making this for a YouTube video and it couldn't look more pathetic. Icing is the best part. Add some water. Just enough so it's the right consistency. Don't need to be absolutely perfect. Oh, I can taste the sugar in the air. You know when it gets powdered in it, it's sort of like colouring. Let's add this bad boy. I think we might have to make more. See, it's like powdered sugar in the air. <laughs> Too watery. Just like my marriage. <laughs> You were the child that went for the paints, weren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you didn't want any. Yeah! <laughs> Happy birthday to science! science. <laughs> you, are you sure you want a sliver or do you actually want a big piece? Just do it. How much? Yes. How many degrees? Macro. Yeah! yeah. So the best bit. Thank you, Florence. And thank you. I thank you for watching. And thank you, science. Thank you, Wherever you may be. My hands are sticking. Give sir. Bye! And she sort of went like that.